Live from San Francisco, extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube, covering Console Connect Live 2015. Sponsored by Console. Here's your host, John Furrier. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live in San Francisco for Console Connect 2015. This is theCUBE special presentation. This is our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Valley. I'm my co-host Jeff Frick, general manager of our CUBE business. Uh, our next guest is Paul Gamp, chief technology officer of IIX and Console Inc. All one new evolution, revolution. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, John, Jeff. It's been, uh, it's been a long time coming. I'm looking forward to being so, here. So Excellent. tell us, how did you get to uh, IIX? What made you uh, join? That's a great question. Uh, <laughs> it's got a long story, so I hope we got plenty of time. Uh, actually, I met Bill Norton 15 years ago uh, when the United Nations Development Program paid Bill, myself, and a, a fellow friend of ours, Philip Smith, to uh, be part of the uh, team that were teaching Mongolia how to get onto the internet. So I've been involved in the internet community for a very long time, and uh, when I caught up with Bill uh, early last year, he was sharing with me the vision for IX. Talked shortly with Albergio after that, and then once you realize what the vision is for this company, it was pretty hard to resist. And of course, the Cube videos. <clears throat> of course, the Cube videos, yeah, I should mention that. <laughs> Tell that story. Yeah, so I was doing my uh, background research on uh, IAX and the founding members of, of the company, and uh, you search for Albergio, and the first thing that shows up is a Silicon Angle interview at the Peering 2.0 forum. And uh, having a chance to hear Al talk about where he was going to take the company and hearing you guys talk about uh, you know, the impact he had had on you and that event, yeah. you know, it, was a, it was a win for me. So it's uh, amazing the shadow that you guys cast. <laughs> when, uh, All, the when the All the way down under. All the way down under. We really appreciate it. And you know, it's awesome work. You see Mark Zuckerberg talking about getting people on the internet. The work you've done is pioneering. And I think one of the things that got me excited about IIX and with Bill on, before they launched and talking to uh, the team is, this is the next generation re-architecting or re-platforming of what the internet should become yeah. or can become. So it's not pure internet per se. Mm. What Console Inc. is providing is actually you know, two disruptive elements. You got the scale of bandwidth yeah. and this social connection where you're scaling up the resources. Yeah. You know, on DevOps, talk about 10x engineers, one engineer in the cloud is like 10x in the old days. Now you guys are, are the 10x networking company where yeah. you guys can do the same thing for networking. Explain what that phenomenon is all about. Yeah, so I think the one thing that really surprised me when I joined IIX and had an opportunity to hear more from Al and Bill and others about what their vision was, was they kept talking about this ecosystem. They referred to the early, you know, Bill's been in the community for a long period of time. He spent a lot of time building an ecosystem. They kept talking about, oh, it's all about social. You know, it's an aspect of social in helping you know, networks get connected. It's network engineers getting to know and trust each other. So when we're building the, when I was being asked to you know, be part of the team to build the console platform, he kept saying, okay, well, it's got to be focused on social. You know, interaction's got to be a core part of it. And at first blush, I didn't understand that. But as you will have seen for those who are here today and had an opportunity to see some of the customer interviews that we've done. We launched an early access program earlier in the year and uh, several of the customers that have helped us develop the console platform kept reiterating back to me. I need to know who I'm connecting to. If this network connection should become an issue, I need to know who I can go to to be able to resolve those issues. It really is about fostering that ecosystem, about getting the connections. And as you refer to the, you know, the 10 by DevOps engineer, we've got the 10 by network engineer. He's got that network, he's got that ability to liaise and trusted network, and we're helping accelerate that. So first and foremost, you know, it's, been a, it's quite a eye-opening thing for me to realize that social was important. Uh, and obviously that's been a core cool part of the platform console design. I think if I think about the other two things that have really helped us uh, get to the point where we are today, you talked about the history of the internet. What's really afforded console to abstract so much complexity from the enterprise? Really it's a few things that have happened over the last couple of years. First and foremost, it's software-defined networking. The fact that we can now automate you know, a global fabric of 150 SDI nodes with something you couldn't do or if you wanted to try and do it, it would have to be done at, you know, the cost of trying to achieve that personally would be too high. But now that we've got SDN technology, 
probably you've had an opportunity to meet with uh, David Jorm today, uh, an, an engineer at IAX, you know, heavily involved in Open Daylight and the ONOS project. You know, obviously, SDN is a core part of our ability to automate a layer two fabric. Yeah, network virtualization, network yeah. function virtualization, exactly. these are all disruptive mm -hmm. trends. You know, agile is the term in DevOps, but resiliency is the network concept. Exactly. And we had uh, Samuel Curtis from Rack 59 was on the queue earlier. Mm -hmm. He said, you know, I'm, he said, I'm a network engineer and I know how hard it is mm -hmm. um, that goes on behind the, the, that, that push button yeah. uh, provisioning you guys provide. Explain the complexity mm -hmm. that you guys take away because to do what you do is not mm -hmm. trivial. No, I certainly hope we've made it look that way. Uh, well, that's the ideal, right? I mean, exactly. trivial, make it easy to use. Is, is a great thing. And I think what we've seen is you know, the enterprises have started to move their critical infrastructure outside the enterprise firewall and into the cloud. The enterprise no longer can not participate in direct connection. The enterprise has to be an active participant in direct connection, but it's complex. You refer to the, you know, the DevOps challenge, there's just not that many good DevOps engineers. Well, it's even more compounded in the network environment where the core skills are not the sort of things that are taught at university. You don't come out with a university degree understanding BGP or to go through the complexity of, okay, which regional internet registry do I need to go to to, to get an ASN number? What is an ASN number? Why do I need one? So the, if you look at the fact that DevOps has driven this mass migration of enterprise applications outside the cloud, it's now put this immense pressure on the public internet connecting the enterprise to those cloud applications. The only way for the enterprise to solve that is to be a participant in direct connection. It's interesting, the cloud brings a whole nother level of uh, yeah. paradigm shifting, mind blowing yeah. paradigm shift where you think about the old days of internetworking. Mm. You know, hub, switch, yeah. you know, wide area, local area networks, that was a huge wealth creator, great disruptive yeah. opportunity. A lot of companies made a lot of money and also value brought the cost down to deploy distributed computing. Absolutely. So now you have cloud and this mm. idea of interclouding or yeah. Traversing multiple cloud resources pools, mm -hmm. if you will, whether it's Azure, Amazon, yeah. VMware, or what Google, what, what, whatever. Yeah, that's a huge opportunity. But now the nuance is, the app, wherever the app sits, the workload yeah. is going to drive the policy. So it's actually flipped upside down. It's not the network to the app; it's the app down to the network. Exactly. How does that affect what you guys do, and and why are you guys relevant in that conversation? That's a great question. Uh, I think it's relevant because we've taken, ironically, exactly the same things that have driven cloud adoption, virtualization, container technology, orchestration, and we've applied that to the network tier. So I described earlier how SDN's allowing us to create a global layer two fabric, but the real, the real key I think that we that we hit upon in solving the problem for the enterprise is using that virtualization and container technology and applying it to routing. So you may or may not know we're uh, you know we're core sponsors of the Cloud Router project. So it's the ability for us to take on that Didn't routing that. component. Yeah, yeah, very proud of the work we've done uh, with the Cloud Router project. Uh, a lot of core open source companies have backed us at launch. Cloudius, CloudBees, Nginx, a long list, uh, OSV, a long list of companies that have helped to support us. Recently, the Australian National University has con started contributing to the Cloud Router project. When we looked across the landscape of uh, open source distributions, many of them are focused on meeting the needs of the stack. You know, they're active participants in ensuring database applications run well on the operating system. Or they're focused on making sure you know, web servers run well on the operating system. We saw a gap in the community where they weren't focusing on down below the operating system. Where was the, where was the, where was the Linux distribution focused on meeting the needs of the network engineer? So we've really focused the Cloud Router project on being an open source distribution focused on solving the problem of routing. And that's the key to how we've been able to extract so much value for, you know, from the enterprise, because not only can configure a layer two network, we can also take all the complexity of configuring layer three. So I want to yeah. drill down a little bit yeah. into that, because you were at Red Hat for a long time, so That's you right. clearly know the power of open source, Absolutely. and you know the power of community to really drive innovation, and to yeah. leverage that inside your enterprise. So yeah. talk about how you're taking that experience um, and leveraging that type of, of really horsepower, yeah. open source and community, now with IAX and console. Great, well I guess the one thing that uh, I've learned from the, you know, my 20 year career in open source software is uh, I wouldn't call it leverage. You, know, uh, you have to respect and, um, and pay homage to the hard work of many engineers who contribute to open source projects. So first and foremost, our goal with the Cloud Router project is to give back to the community. Um, you know, we're, we're standing on the shoulders of giants. Open Daylight's got four, 500 participants. It's a massive code base, uh, active, constant development. 
Onos is in a similar sort of camp, coming up as the second in the horse in the race on, you know, who's going to lead open source SDN. So first and foremost, we wanted to give back to the community and give the network engineers that want to start to embrace open source a vehicle for them to say, okay, you know, this package, this software application is relevant to me, but the traditional Linux distributions are not, not focused on making that part of the core operating system. So that's an area where we think we add value back to the community. So that, I think, is the first thing that I learned, is that it's, it's not leverage, um, it's, it's part of being active and contributing. It's sharing. It's sharing, that's right. It's about right. being part of the, the system, yeah. the community. And so, you know, uh, more specifically, what we've learned from our time at uh, Red Hat was that, um, you know, I was with Red Hat prior to the, the divergence into Fedora and Red Hat Enterprise Linux. And that divergence really acknowledged the fact that there are two communities. You know, the Fedora community is, is directly focused on the developer, fast release cycle, release early, release often. What a developer wants, right? A developer wants the latest libraries, the latest tools. The enterprise, on the other hand, wants stability. They want maintain, maintainability. They want good security management. So we're following that model in a, to a large extent. Cloud Router is based on the most recent version of Fedora. Uh, we're pushing forward on, on ensuring that it includes the latest release of Open Daylight. Yeah, these are huge chunks of software and there's a lot of complexity in getting them working. And we think we can add value back to the community by doing that heavy lifting. And then obviously a version of that, Cloud Router, forms part of the heavy lifting we do on behalf of the enterprise in enabling them to participate in direct Paul, talk about the customer conversations. What yeah. are the big, um, things you're hearing conversation-wise, and, and what should enterprises that aren't familiar with console connect or direct connection understand about having their own autonomous system? Being an, an autonomous system mm -hmm. is different than just plugging in uh, to some bandwidth. Yeah. Because they might say, hey, you know, prices are dropping. Mm -hmm. Transit's down, so why, what's, there? they might not have be informed. So share your opinion yeah. on that. Great, thank you. Uh, so I think you know, uh, there's always that option I can just go by transit. But as we've seen over the uh, you know, 2015 is going to blow this off for 2014, 2016 is going to be even worse. I think a, a recent Gartner survey showed that 65% of IT professionals who were interviewed said that uh, a denial of service attack can cost them $240,000 a day. And for one-fifth of those surveys, it was $1.2 million a day. So you have to acknowledge as an enterprise that if I'm going to use public internet or transit to get connected to my ERP or my CRM or my public facing infrastructure, that I'm vulnerable to denial of service. Uh, that's only one of the issues with public internet. The other one, of course, is you know, black holing and hijacking, both of which refer to the fact that there is a, the internet's a network of networks, and I described earlier how valuable these network engineers are. And those trust relationships of good people doing the best they can, but it's only several weeks ago that we had a large telco in Asia black hole big chunks of Europe because they made an error in their configuration. So suddenly all those packets that were destined for one destination suddenly get routed to another location and all those packets get black holed. So you need to, I guess, acknowledge the fact that um, sure, you can use transit if you like, but be aware of the risk. Yeah, it's like going out during uh, wartime yeah. and not having any protection. Yeah. I mean, you're always exposed. Yeah, yeah. So I think what uh, direct connection is, and you're know, asking, answering a question about ASNs, so to directly connect networks, that means that not only have you got a, a layer two connection between two locations and you can get a packet from one location to another, you're involved and engaged in routing. So I can advertise these are my routes, this is my address. A good analogy is a zip code, right? So if I want to be able to send something via the US Postal Service, I got to give it a zip code. So think of an autonomous system number as a lot like a zip code. So, okay, here's this packet, now I know where it needs to go. And so you have to have an autonomous system number to participate in Border Gateway Protocol. So if the enterprise wants to be truly directly connected to Google or Amazon or Azure, they have to be involved in BGP, they have to have an ASN, and consoles help to solve all of that for them. The analogy we heard earlier in the cube was uh, first class and coach, and I'm like, well, why not just a <laughs> f fleet of new jets? Right. So, so yeah. what is the analogy you guys like to use? Because this is a new class of service, it provides kind of the architectural foundation for end-to-end -end architecture, which if you look at SDN and virtualization and some of the things going on with containers and application development, people want an end to end network, especially with the growth of internet of things. Yeah. The edge of the network now is just as important as the core. Yeah. So that's an end to end architecture. You're seeing the big guys all lining up 
Yeah. You know, EMC's under under siege from uh, hedge fund um, Gordon Gordon Geckos of the world. Yeah. You know, because they're just a storage company. Yeah. Uh, this HP's a server company. Dell's transforming. Mm. They're all kind of integrating in. Yeah, I agree. So the analogy we like to use, and now Bergio coined the phrase, you know, direct connect 2.0. So if we look at the traditional 1.0, it's the, the large SaaS application providers or the EMCs of the world who've been able to acquire the skills required to be part of that direct connect community. But now that all of the enterprise are moving, they're, you know, they're no longer running core infrastructure. The CIO today's far more focused on choosing the correct SaaS provider and the correct SLA than they were five years ago on building and maintaining private infrastructure. All of that mission critical infrastructure is now moving outside the enterprise firewall. To your point, you know, it's now about the edge is, where is the edge, right? So I think- Well, it's perim perimeterless. Yeah, it's perimeterless. And there's edges everywhere, yeah. right? right? Exactly. <laughs> Security's upside down. Yeah. And now you've got edges that need to have low latency, real time, no jitter. I mean, this is like I the mean, new normal. It begs yeah. the question, why, why wouldn't they? I mean, what, what's holding back? Is it simply the skill set? Is it simply the ease? Is it prioritization? I mean, I don't hear a lot of reasons why not to direct connect on most of your core traffic and applications. Yeah, and I think that's where uh, console and IAX comes in to add value, because there is a lot of complexity to this. First, you'd have to know that you need a BGP. Then you've got to know that you need an ASN. So you've got to find and retain a scare resource of a network engineer who's got the experience to do it. Then you've got to submit your articles of incorporation to one of the regional internet registries, acquire an ASN. Then you've got to configure your BGP peering session. Then you've got to work out, okay, who do I want to connect to and where are they? So then you've got to find the organization that you want to connect to. And that's a, that's a challenge, right? You don't, if I go to this data center, does that mean I'm going to be able to establish a direct connection to all the trading partners I want? Or am I going to have to establish multiple connections to multiple islands to get the richness of connectivity I need? We have one example of a customer here today who is using 50 SaaS applications. Now what's the chance that I can get a, you know, a piece of dark fiber, a network engineer, sufficient experience in an ASN, and send my you know, connection to one data center and get all 50 SaaS applications? That's not the case. Well, even if you could pull it off. Yeah. That's like putting everything on a string, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. One time. Yeah. How long is it going to take? Time and cost. What's the time scale on that? Yeah. Months, years, Months. weeks? I mean, it's a long time. Yeah. 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 Testing, QA, development. Yeah. So one, time to market, time to value. Yeah. And two, capability. Yeah, exactly. All right, so I got to ask you the hard question. So yeah, I get the cost piece, right? Yeah. No brainer, the hidden cost with DDoS and all managing all that. Totally get it. No brainer on costs. What future enablement does that give the company in terms of headroom? What value can be created? What creative license could they take? What could they do with that extra time, mm. that resource? How do you guys see that? What's your vision? Great. So we've taken a design-driven development approach with the console platform. We've worked uh, very closely with some core early access uh, partners to help us develop that platform. So what we learned from our customers was to focus our design around four core areas. Trust, control, performance, and automation. So that's where I think we're going to continue to add value to the enterprise. We've learned about how network engineers need to establish trust. If I'm going to directly connect my network to your network, I need to know how to get in contact with you. I need to know that your contact information is up to date. And we all know the quality of data increases with use. So that's why we've integrated aspects of social community to achieve that. Okay, we're on, out of time, Paul. Appreciate your time. Give you the final word. Um, what is this show about for the folks watching live right now and on, on demand who aren't here? What did yeah. they miss? What's the vibe? What's this core show about Console Connect all about today? I think the core value proposition is learning what we've uh, been building. You know, where it's the unveiling of the console platform, it's the unveiling of that, that what we described earlier, a social platform that provides layer three and layer two automation so the enterprise can, can directly connect to SaaS applications, cloud providers, trading partners, as simple as clicking a button. Paul, thanks so much. CTO of IIX and Console Inc. here sharing his insight. Thanks for that great insight on theCUBE. We'll be back more live from San Francisco for Console Connect Live 2015. This is theCUBE, we'll be right back.